You're listening to Turi Writers' She Said What podcast. I'm Turi, along with Marcy Persky. When was the last time you opened up your medicine cabinet and actually checked for a date on that bottle of Pepto-Bismol? In this installment, Marcy is desperate for something to help her get over the flu, and I have several good reasons why dates don't matter. Hey. How are you feeling? Um... Not well yet, but not as bad. Okay. So, so yeah, you... Frankie Frankie brought this home from work as a gift. Nice. <laughs> he was sick, and so I stayed away from him. And then he went to work on Monday and immediately came home, which is not Frankie. No, he's pretty tough. And then by Monday afternoon, I was starting to not feel well. Ugh. Tuesday, he's all better. What? <laughs> going to work. Yeah. What? <laughs> Tuesday, he's he's fine. He's fine, and I'm like dying by Tuesday. I had a hundred and two fever. I mean, I like couldn't move. My throat was so sore. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> he's back at work. And so, um, yeah. And so here it is. Uh, what a a week later, and so my. My arm's still in the cast, is screaming at me in pain. Ugh. Well, and then, so, so, you get this on Wednesday. I just start drug piling. You know, like anything in the medicine. Oh, yeah, I'll take uh, one of area. these. And one, like an Easter basket full of, like. Exactly. But an Easter basket that expired in 2015. <laughs> I should go through my medicine cabinet. I mean, but here's the thing. I don't really believe that Dramamine expires. I believe if I I get on a boat, something I haven't done in years, I believe, though, that if I get on a boat and I feel like I might feed the fish, that this ancient Dramamine, the the lore (laughs) of the ancient Dramamine, I feel like it would help me. And maybe it would for the placebo effect. And so I don't throw it out. And I can't be the only one because I actually have in my medicine cabinet baby stuff that a friend of mine gave me that she didn't use when her kids grew out of it. So there you go. My kids, my yeah. youngest, is 21. So, yeah, I think the yeah, whole... I have this bottle of Afrin, and, and I'm like, when did we buy this? And this, like, three days after I'd been using it, you know, every yeah. four hours, even <laughs> though it says once every 12 and I turned it upside down. And it says expires six fifteen. I'm like, okay. And then I found two Alka Seltzer Plus capsules. <laughs> and I said, I'm not even gonna look for one. These expired. I'm just gonna take them and see if they work. Yeah, yeah. And did they? It, um, I'm just assuming that nothing works. All that's going to work is for this to go away. So then we subscribe to the same theory, which is just if it's if it's a non-addictive, non-toxic drug, just take it if you have it. If you're feeling crappy enough, it might help. It's called a crapshoot. You don't know if it's going to work or not. Well, I emailed my doctor and I said, I'm just exhausted from this post covid likely post covid cough and she took pity on me and gave me something and then this is what's wrong with medicine in america i could probably buy something over the counter that would work just as well but that would be 13 bucks and if i get the prescription version that's three dollars so guess which exactly yeah yeah I i figured that out early on when i went on old people insurance Old people insurance. God, we're a disgusting pair. <laughs> I know. And oh, here's okay. the awful part. The awful part is that the people our age are the people who say to me, I never listen to podcasts. And I want to go, screw you. I custom made this just for you, fellow old That's person. Right. You won't find a bunch of 30-somethings with 27-year-old Afrin in their cabinet. You will not. No, you won't. <sighs> That's right. And so right now I'm looking out my window at these 40 mile an hour winds and the TV is screaming at us over and over again, you know, about this weather alert storm weather. Yeah. alert, Yeah. Starting tonight through Tuesday. And I have to tell you what Tuesday is. It's a date. I cannot miss 
Tuesday is cast comes off day. Well, no, you're going to miss it because the stupidest thing that you could possibly do is drive down the mountain to get your cast off and slide into a ditch. I know, and I'm so upset. My advent calendar (laughs) has been when the cast comes off every day. So it looks like the cast is on. Now, let me ask you this. Do they pull this stunt where they go, well, if you can't be here Tuesday, it'll be another two weeks? That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> and even if they're going to take off this cast yes. just to x-ray it yes. and put on a new cast. It'll be less itchy, won't it? Well, it'll be a different color. <laughs> For so pity's sakes. <laughs> just wrap it up in one of the zillion things you've got. <laughs> wrap it up in one of your old concert t-shirts and call it a day. I've, I've been cutting up old socks. Yeah, you put a mitten on it anyway because you were clouding your husband in the face with it in the middle of the night. Well, you know what? What? That's another thing that we discussed this morning. When you're going to come back to bed and cloud him in the yeah. face again? <laughs> I've been sleeping in that damn chair for almost six weeks now. I don't even because know how you live. First I just a cast. It sounds second, like you're this close to camping under a viaduct. That's what it sounds like. I am. I am. Or with the goats in the goat house with all their straw. Is your is your yeah. husband who gave you the the flu? Is he willing to have you come back and cloud him in the face? Does he feel he <laughs> deserves it now? I think that he doesn't want the flu back. Yeah, he can't. This it won't come one. back to him now. You're not going to pass it back and forth like a bottle of Jägermeister. I don't know. I I asked Jeeves, <laughs> Jeeves, and Jeeves says that this influenza B, you can definitely get it again. I thought Jeeves was kaput. Yes. For a long time in Oakland, there was one of the few huge downtown office buildings. This was before Oakland became Hipsterville. And one of those buildings had a big Ask Jeeves across the top of it, long past the point where you might as well just stand over Jeeves' grave and yell at him. Here we are alienating anybody under the age. Why don't you explain who Jeeves was before there was was Google? There was Jeeves. Yes. Before there was Google, there was a website that would supposedly get you the data you wanted. And it was called Ask Jeeves. And Jeeves didn't really know very much, so Jeeves went away. No, Jeeves was kind of stupid. And he looked like a cartoon of a British chauffeur. Yes. A valet. Yeah. if I mean, I would have made my Jeeves look more like Albert Einstein or somebody smart. Oh, then you would have had to call it Ask Albert. Albert. Go Ask Albert when he was just small. More stuff that people under 60 aren't going to understand. That's true, too. Attention, everybody under 60. Leave this podcast. (laughs) Leave it now. Unless you have at least one medication that expired in 2015. That's going to be the qualification. You know how they used to have those, those club nights where you had to bring something like a reverse scavenger hunt? Used yeah. to be at this time of year, you had to bring something for the food pantry, except yep. now all the food pantry wants you to bring them is cash in an envelope. That's right. But it used to be that you can't get rid of that hundred year old can of borscht that your dad brought over. Yeah. It, had, it, could, it, could, it was a jar. It had to be, yeah, it was, couldn't be expired. Right. Nasty. But a, a cover that used to be, you know, at that time, 20 bucks, you'd bring two cans of, of cream of tomato soup. You were in. Cool. Yep. And I always wondered if the people in the food pantry thought, I wonder what club did this to us. I wonder what <laughs> discotheque is responsible for the fact that there's nothing in my bag this week but Campbell's soup. Anyway. Or, or this can of lima beans. Speaking of things that are expired, I'm very excited that I will be able to give away some obsolete technology. I, uh, oh, yeah? I bought a used thing for, for broadcasting from home that really made it possible to stay home and work and have kids at home and not move from place to place. But the technology has changed, and you don't need this piece of equipment anymore. And if you do use it, it's hideously expensive, so... I put it in the closet years ago, and it's been sitting there ever since. So I just put it on my Facebook page that people who do what I do, could anybody use it? And, of course, immediately I hear from people telling me it's obsolete. 
which of course is why I'm giving it away for free in case <laughs> anybody needs parts or yeah, I know it's thanks a lot. And they're telling me what they've got that works better. And you know what? This reminds me. Yes. About the article about how electric cars are making AM radio obsolete. And well, we had a family discussion about it last night. About getting an electric car? No, AM radio. <laughs> Wait, you could even have a discussion with that with your kid? She didn't just say, what? What's AM radio? Well, this, this was with my, my kid husband. There's There's got to be AM stations still that are going strong somewhere in large cities. And uh, remember when, like, the all-night all trucker AM radio stations? Yeah, I knew that guy. And, and the crazy guy that would do, like, uh, all this weird mystic strange conspiracy theory oh yeah crap. that was uh art uh bell it, it set me wondering does anybody even listen to it anymore we well, all have you know i just serious i you just got... filled in for several shifts on a am station here and most of the listeners are online <laughs> they do have an am signal and what's nice about that is you can justify doing it in real time it just made me sad am radio was my life back <laughs> At one point, well, we we discussed about how much electricity is going to cost to charge those things in your garage. That coincidentally was discussed at our breakfast table today. We found out that our roof won't hold solar. If we just did the garage, would it be enough to charge a car? And the special unit went straight down the rabbit hole. He said, yeah, but it'd be more than we needed so we could run a thing to them. I'm like, no, no, stop. I don't want to run a thing to the house. I just want to know if I slap a couple of these things on the garage roof, can we have a car that runs for essentially free after that? And he couldn't answer that question. We just got our first electric bill since it's gotten cold uh -oh. up here. Uh-oh. Yeah, so, is about... it like the water bill when your daughter dumped the entire uh, thing of water out on your front lawn, the, the entire month's supply of fresh water? And is it like that? Actually, well, no, water's cheap, actually, but... Not for things... long. The first winter electric bill that actually keeps our water running from the faraway pump house all the way to the house and yes. then back to wherever it has to go to get heated again and back. Yeah. Uh, it was over $300. And it's not winter yet. And I know, like, some of you guys that live in cities where you heat with electricity and do all this other stuff, it's probably a lot, not a lot. But it, to us, it was like super, super, super shock. The electric bill is the heat tape that keeps our water running, our pipes from freezing. So Frankie got very high tech. The, in the last week. He wrapped a bunch of towels around it. <laughs> no, it's even higher tech than that. Old t-shirts? <laughs> old concert t-shirts? They're covered with straw. Uh, that'll work. So, you know. so as long as these uh, 60 mile an hour winds don't blow all the straw away. Well, that's where the old concert t-shirts come in. You stuff the straw into old concert t-shirts. I like my concert t-shirts. Well, yeah, I know they could be worth something someday, yeah. <laughs> in my drawer. Yeah. If you've made it this far, chances are you've been enjoying Tory Writers' She Said What podcast, in which case you might also like my book, She Said What, A Life on the Air. You can find that at your neighborhood independent bookstore or on Amazon. Marcy and I really appreciate your good reviews wherever you care to leave them. Your kind words help the podcast grow. Thanks. 